Hi there! Today I'm going to talk about something that's been a long time coming. Uh, I just wanted to collect up all of my photos first, but today is going to be my wedding vlog! So first of all, uh, it's like almost eight years since Kev and I uh, first met. Basically, we first met because uh, I was a student up in Gala Shields and he was back in Newcastle and he did an online radio show and we had some mutual friends, one of which uh, invited me to listen to the show and I was up in Gala Shields and bored out of my mind because it is not a very interesting place. I'm really sorry if you watch my videos and you come from Gala Shields and uh, you feel slightly insulted by that. but. Um, when I was there it wasn't great. There was a bingo hall, one nightclub and a lot of sheep um, and you know I like I like my stuff, I like interesting things and I just couldn't find anything interesting so I just came to Edinburgh whenever I had the money. Uh, so yeah uh, so I was bored and I decided to give it a go um, and I listened and I tried to make a request for a song which he couldn't play because uh, the station he was on at the time had a no swearing policy so he emailed me back and then we got talking over email and he added me on Facebook and we decided to meet up that Easter and yeah the rest is kind of history. <laughs> we got together and it was fun and it was supposed to only be a summer relationship and yeah eight years passed. <laughs> so and a couple of years ago he proposed to me when we were in the Sahara Desert. Uh, we'd gone on holiday to Tunisia and as part of that there was a small camel trekking expedition. Basically you got to ride on a camel into the Sahara Desert, watch some sunset and come back. And um, yeah, it was actually the whole reason he bought this camera I'm using in the first place was for the proposal so he could video it. But he didn't tell me any of this of course. Um, we, I just thought it was so he could record um, the trip itself. Like all day he'd been wandering around with this camera pretending to be doing nature documentaries and stuff. We uh, visited some of the places that were originally used as sets in the original Star Wars film and he's just like sort of around corners and stuff with this camera and waffling away and there's a couple of other people on the trip were quite amused by this guy waffling away in this camera. And so we're on, we we got to the camel trekking in the evening, uh, we're on the camels and he's waffling away into the camera with the camel and we get off the camels and I'm starting to get a little bit so inwardly annoyed because all I can think is you're just not enjoying the trip, you're just filming it but you're not actually enjoying any of it, you're missing it so that you can film it. Which is something that I just get really stressed when people do. It, it's really stupid because it's something that doesn't concern me, but it takes my enjoyment out of the thing. It's what really annoys me about people who film stuff at gigs, actually. So anyway, yeah, um, he hands the camera over to a couple and says, would you mind videoing us for a moment? And I'm like, oh my god, what are you doing? This is so embarrassing. We are those tourists. What on earth are you doing? And then he got down on one knee and my brain just went blank and I didn't know what was going on and he was down on one knee and he asked me to marry him and all of a sudden I, I just forgot there was a camera and just kind of went Whoa! back at him. Actually that's, that's not quite true. Uh, having watched the video a few times and sort of inwardly cringed I mostly went are you joking? <laughs> I don't think I ever did actually say yes but um yeah, I guess yes was kind of implied. Can I ask a quick favour? Yeah, could you just... Is it a photo or a film? It's film. It's a film. The recording's already running. Oh. But if you could just record us for a couple of seconds. you will be some commentary. I've got that. Uh, hello? 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 Ben, get rid of it. What are you doing? We got you. Yeah. Really quickly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's see the ring. I think he has to put it on your finger. I can't actually at this second remember which finger it is, so you have to. I'm not too sure if the size is right. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, that's okay. Maybe that's the wrong over. hand, though. Oh, yes, yes. Is it the wrong hand? <laughs> <laughs> It's a nerve-wracking experience. There, we are. there it is. There it is. Oh, yes. Woo! Change the size um, up until Monday. <laughs> Congratulations, guys! Cheers. Congratulations. Yes. In the middle of the Sahara. Yeah, it was. That's the surroundings. Look at that, right next to the cows. Yes, thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> I have to give you a cuddle. <laughs> Congratulations. How exciting. I don't know how to take it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah you can see yourself it was really odd but it was lovely and he's he proposed to me in the desert and that's nice and it wasn't like i really dislike public proposals where like people propose in the middle of really big gigs or festivals or something or like on television because then it always feels like you're pressured into saying yes and I don't like that at all but we were, while it was sort of semi-public it was a bunch of people we'd never see again and um, he keeps joking that had I said no he would have just left me in the desert at least I hope it's a joke <laughs> so anyway yeah we uh, we planned to get married a lot sooner than we did but then costs mount up and time and location and stuff like that um, I'm pagan, I'm pagan and Kev is agnostic and uh, while I wanted something of my spiritual choices in the wedding I didn't want to force the whole thing on him because I know it's not something he believes in and so we decided to sort of mash some stuff together and come out with a wedding that we wanted so we wrote, wrote our own vows and we had a friend of ours um, come up with a sort of ceremony idea which she led and it was lovely and actually there's some of that, it is some of like our vows and stuff are online on our website which I will link to below which will probably only work until August if you want to see it after August um, I will probably put a video or something up, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but we only have our domain until August anyway. Maybe I'll put something on Instagram or something like that maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, and as part of it we also had a ring warming ceremony, um, we, and we have blue rings. Uh, yeah, please, yeah. Please excuse me for being so super close up, uh, my nails are kind of a mess at the moment, I haven't had a chance to do them, so yeah, but hopefully you can see the ring properly. We have blue rings because uh, another friend of ours found these amazing Doctor Who rings on Etsy and um, we're both huge Doctor Who fans and so we thought they'd be perfect. It's actually one of the, a joke. But um, I, I kind of joke about it, but like one of the reasons I kind of knew that would work was the first time I walked into his house, he had two bookshelves full of classic Doctor Who videos. Not modern Doctor Who. I, I, I do love a person who can appreciate a good John Pertwee story. Another thing I did was obviously I sew, so I handmade my dress. It was an absolutely massive a robe a la Francois, which is a sack back gown. Um, I used a historically accurate pattern. It's a mixture of the J.P. Ryan pattern, but I also used a few tweaks and bits here and there from Patterns of Fashion 1. Totally forgotten who that's by. I will probably try and include a little thing in my bob somewhere. So the last time I tried to include a subtitle, it told me I couldn't because I had an end card or something, which was strange. Anyway, uh, if I can't include it as a subtitle, I'll include it in the description along with everything else I've said I will include in the description and hopefully you remember. Anyway, yeah, um, so I had me my dress, um, pattern is historically accurate, uh, I wore a set of fully bone stays underneath, and I wore these huge paneers that uh, basically kept me sane through this whole thing of oh my god I don't have enough time to do this, oh my god it's so much complicated stuff, oh god what am I gonna do? She basically kept me sane and helped me and she's just a wonderful person and I'm so glad of her help. Um, it was also her friend the rings funnily enough. Um, 
yeah, um, however, despite all this accuracy, I didn't use a historically accurate fabric for the dress. Oh no, um, originally I was going to have a fabric with some goats on. Um, yeah, yeah, you did hear that right, it had goats on it. It was an Alexander Henry fabric, um, I can't remember what it's called, it was from the Mexican collection from a few years ago and uh, it's called something in Spanish and I've totally forgotten the name of the collection. Was it like Los Gondolaris or something like that? Any one of the fabrics had like hands and goats on it and uh, there was a blue version and it was really pretty. But they stopped printing it before I could afford enough fabric to make the dress and I was really upset and I didn't know what I was going to do and then I went on Spoonflower and I found on Spoonflower all the Doctor's favourite things which as you can probably guess is Doctor Who themed. From a distance it just looks like a really pretty fabric with a light blue print on a dark blue background. Um, it sort of looks like it could be accurate from a distance, it could be very historically accurate and then you get up close and notice there are TARDISes and sonic screwdrivers and canines and bow ties and psychic paper and seals of Rassilon all over it and it's just wonderful. I love it and again it sort of ties into stuff that we both enjoy and yeah so I wore this massive gown covered in TARDISes and it was wonderful. Um, myself we only had close friends and family there. And it was lovely. It went without a hitch. Uh, well, us, our bridesmaids, our Dalek bridesmaid, page boy, really, I think, <laughs> because uh, Spike, a Dalek Spike is a he. Which, um, yeah, you heard that right too. We had a Dalek uh, bridesmaid groomsman thing. Um, <laughs> our friend Lars built a Dalek a few years back, and we just really wanted it at the wedding. And so it stood there and presided over the ceremony. So instead of a shot, what good wedding we had a bit of an eye stalk wedding really, um, and it was kind of fun. And the reception went really well. And all in all, it was just lovely, and I was very happy. And yeah, it was it was kind of awesome. It was kind of late when we got photo when we went out for photos um, because obviously we got married in November and it was afternoon, so the light was fading. Uh, but we got some lovely photos. Uh, we even got some quite nice photos of us lost in a hedge maze, which was kind of amusing in such a big dress. Uh, those those photos came out really nice, actually. Um, <laughs> they're really funny and actually to be honest a lot of our photos are pretty fun and you can see those on our website until August as well. I'm going to stop waffling now and yeah I'll see you with the next video which will be less wedding related. Goodbye for now.